everyone. God bless you. Welcome to the house of the Lord. And uh, it is awesome to, uh, to be together one more day. And um, today, uh, I would say uh, last week, uh, Juan did a great job uh, with uh, the message. And we will continue uh, every week. We will continue uh, progressing and, and growing in knowledge and wisdom and what God reveals to us. Amen. So everyone, everyone here, everyone ready? All right. Praise God. Well, today, um, uh, one of the, uh, the, the, the message that I was going to go over today is, and I t- entitled it, The Price and Prevention of Adultery. Now, a lot of times this might not be the most uh, popular uh, message sometimes that is presented. You know, a lot of times it's churches and, and a lot of times it's easier to, to present, you know, the prosperity and, and, and the, the joy and the the ability to beat the giant within you and you know uh, those are uh you know awesome messages to present because you know they're very uplifting and positive but you know a lot of times we as christians we also need to to hear and it, it, it a lot of things that are going to be discussed today are things that we know but that constantly constantly need to be reiterated we need to to hear these things to encourage ourselves to be able to make the right decisions and not the wrong decisions. True, we're human, we make mistakes. But if we can minimize those mistakes, and especially as Christians, we can have a better opportunity in walking uh, 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 the the path of righteousness with, with our Lord and Savior, amen. So, the price and prevention of adultery. Occasionally, occasionally I hear of, you know, disturbing news that someone has committed adultery. Now, everyone knows what adultery means here, right? Everyone kind of knows the, the definition of adultery, right? Uh, is uh, basically uh, married. It's usually pertaining to married couples. You know, uh, one is like cheating or uh, uh, committing a uh, sexual immorality or, or, or you know, betraying uh, one's partner. Okay. So occasionally, I hear of of things like this, disturbing news of. Sometimes it's, uh, and I'm talking about in the Christian community, because we know in the world, we know that, especially in today's day, I mean, it's almost like recommended to commit adultery, you know? That's how corrupted uh, society has got today. But but as a Christian community, as a, a Christian church, we are now hearing, sometimes you'll hear like, oh, this pastor, you know, has committed adultery, or this uh, artist, you know, that's been singing in ministry for years and years, or maybe it's your the youth pastor, or it's, uh, uh, you know, the youth leader, or, or uh, praise and worship leader, or something like that, and you hear of these situations where there is a, a, a this act of, of sin that is committed, the, the, the act of adultery, and sometimes leaving you know the spouse whether it's the wife or husband or sometimes even you know children on their own just because of this uh this mistake that that people make my reaction usually is like what are they thinking why did they do that you know i mean don't they have the fear of god i mean uh, aren't they representing god and you know they're in that position you know what led them to commit this sin and uh you know how how are they gonna how can they go on knowing that they might leave their children separated or all all over the place and you know a lot of times we think this but the act of adultery is very real and it is able to influence all of us and we have to be very very careful very very careful when it comes to uh uh, making and minimizing these kind of mistakes um, because we do know that there is great consequences in the act of adultery uh, there is a terrible price of the sin of adultery how one can prevent it prevent the sin of adultery one of the best places to turn is uh, to in the book of Proverbs in Proverbs 5 1 through 6 we can find warnings against the bitter end of adultery now but the book of Proverbs is uh, basically written by King Solomon. Everyone knows who King Solomon is, right? Solomon was the son of David, was blessed with ultimate wisdom, and was also very experienced in the 
uh, act of adultery and fornicating and sexual morality. So uh, he was very wise, but still made so many mistakes when it came to this sin. It says uh, in the book of uh, Proverbs 5, uh, 1 through 6, it says, My son, be attentive to my wisdom, godly wisdom learned by costly experience. So uh, in, in, in this verse, King Solomon is actually advising his sons, like basically saying, hey guys, I went through this, made a lot of mistakes. You guys, listen to me. Don't make the same mistakes. Okay, so through costly experience, inc incline your ear to my understanding that you may exercise discrimination, uh, discrimination and discretion, good judgment, and your lips may reserve knowledge and answer wisely to temptation. Let us pray. Let us pray. Dear Father, Almighty King of the universe, we worship you. We give you praise and we thank you for the, the abundance and the goodness that you have given to us, that you have laid down your life on Calvary for us, that you shed your blood and you gave us the, the, the opportunity, Father God, to have everlasting life in your presence. We ask today, Father, that you give us guidance through your Holy Spirit, that you open up your word, Father God, and that you give us insight that we may be able to, to understand, Father God, and to, that you may give us strength and wisdom and knowledge to make the correct decisions in our life and to be able to push away corruption, to be able to, to identify, Father God, when we are not walking in the right path. We know that you are the king of glory and that all things are possible. We know that we are on the winning side because we love you, Father, and we know that you are all powerful. We ask, Father God, to, to, to give us, Father God, th this blessing, Father Jesus, of your word. In Jesus' name, we love you, we worship you, and we give you praise. And in Jesus' name, we say, amen. So, the prevention and the sin of adultery. Now, the price of adultery is can cause many consequences and i know a lot of y'all have seen it personally a lot of us have even witnessed it by experience you know it's not it's something that sometimes can be very embarrassing sometimes can be very shameful but it is something that is very real it's something that happens all the time and especially in today's day has been happening more and more and i know other a lot of younger people here today that are like, well, you know, I'm not married, you know, but this is something that it's very, very important, especially to the younger people, because this is something that you are going to be presented with eventually when you do decide to get married and whenever God presents you with that person that you're going to spend the rest of your life with. Now, the cost uh, of adultery, like one of the things it can cost you is your wealth. Now, that's one of the things that I was reading in, 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 in the Word when uh, Solomon pleads with his children to stay away uh, from the immoral woman, Proverbs 5, 7, and 8. Now, obviously, Solomon is telling his, his, his sons. So this is coming from the point of view of a man telling his sons. But this goes either way. This is not just staying away from the immoral woman, but it's staying away from the immoral man or the boy or, or girl, you know? This is something that we have to be aware of. And Solomon's saying, that not only can it affect, you know, uh, have so many different consequences, but it can affect your wealth. Now, it says, Now then, my sons, listen to me, and do not depart from, forget, the word of my mouth. Let your way in life be far from her, and do not go near the door of her house. Avoid even being near the place places of temptation. Now, this is awesome, excellent advice. So basically what Solomon is saying is like, uh, don't even put yourself in that situation. You know, don't put yourself in the position where you're going to be tempted. So a lot of times we as Christians, and I'm talking about the Christian church, of course, uh, we know what's right and we know what's wrong, but sometimes we kind of, I, I've seen, uh, we've all experienced it maybe sometimes where we kind of get, kind of close to it but without making the mistake for example uh if if you have 
if if you're trying to to keep yourself away from the corruption, away from temptation, a lot of times I, I use the example of an alcoholic. Um, if there is if there is a person that is addicted to alcohol, and they are are, are free from it, you know, God God liberated them, and they are no longer, you know, going to the bars and no longer drinking. Good, excellent. Now, should that person be the person that is chosen to go minister into the bar you know maybe see i don't think so because they maybe had struggled with this sin more than others and i think that some sins affect some people more than others you know and that's a topic to get into another day but if, if, if this person was liberated from alcoholism the first thing you do is don't send them to evangelize inside a bar or or, or don't even go into and they could say well, i'm not going to drink i'm going to go in a i'm just going to go and have a coke you know or uh you know a diet pepsi or something like that and then you know i can tell the people there you know that god is real and stuff like that but see what they're doing is they're putting themselves in an awkward position they're putting themselves back in front of the thing that was had them bound before i'm not saying that they can't resist it but why put yourself in that situation because you're putting yourself in front of that temptation and that's not what that's not what solomon solomon's trying to say be wise don't make these mistakes that i made don't put yourself in that in that position he's saying get away from he's talking about the immoral woman and of course we're talking about the immoral woman or the immoral man if you especially and then i'm saying like young people this is a good chance for you to start thinking about and praying one day you know you will get married one day you're gonna have a family but right now it's important to kind of look at the person that you are with you know if this whether it's the, a, a young a young man or a young uh, a young uh, girl you know look at how the relationship is going if they're presenting you and they're trying to push you into doing things that you know are not right then basically what solomon is saying is like probably remove yourself from that place you know remove yourself from the temptation and i know it's easier said than done and we'll get into that um his first reason least uh, um okay so when i was talking about it, co it can cost you your wealth <laughs> obviously we know that if you're married and you commit adultery that can lead to divorce and then that can lead to things like child support and alimony and things like that so we know that there's a big cost and this is more, more to the younger people that haven't even got into that realm you know they there can be so many things that come up you could be work i've seen people and I've known people that, you know, they, they work very hard and then sometimes they'll get their check and it's like, wow, you know, it's like half of my check is gone, you know, and, and right, rightly so. A lot of times, you know, they, they deserve that, you know, for what has happened. But what Solomon is trying to present to his sons is that a lot of times uh, this sin, this mistake can cost you your wealth. Uh, I, I uh, know a lot of friends that I grew up a lot of them weren't Christian but some of them were and uh, in high school and uh, I saw a lot of them make mistakes when they were younger and what I mean by mistakes you know they were with you know girls and then what ended up happened you know some got pregnant so some got some got married some didn't and some are, are still to this day paying the price the price of you know paying child and a lot of these guys i know some of them that they, they don't learn their lesson you know I, i'll still communicate with them every once in a while but i know a couple of them that they they still they'll go with someone else and now they already have like two ex-wives or three ex-wives and kids over here and kids over there and and, and one of these guys not too long ago he was like man i pay so much everywhere you know and it's like well you know you got to learn your lesson you got you got to you got to do better what i advise is asking the lord for forgiveness and changing your life and you know of course oh yeah you know i'm gonna do that you know i'm, I'm, I'm gonna get to that one day well of course that's what they say but if god doesn't actually have an interaction with them they're not going to change but what i'm saying is that a lot of the people that i grew up with made these mistakes you know and i'm not even saying i was i i made mistakes we all make mistakes 
But if we can minimize those mistakes and if we can learn from it and read the word, God will give us insight. God will give us um, the ability to be able to have the Holy Spirit tell us, hey, you need to get out of this situation. You need to remove yourself from this. And this is, like I said, for the young people, kind of look at the person that you're with or that you're thinking about being with. So obviously the, the price of adultery can cost your physical health. So when I was reading it, it says in, in uh, Proverbs 5.11, it says, And you mourn at last when your flesh and your body are consumed. So what does this imply? What is it? What is Solomon telling him? And like I said, Solomon obviously has a lot of experience in this. He's saying, when your body is consumed, he is implying sickness. He is implying both physical and mental. Now we know that that adultery, sexual immorality, all these things are are sin and corruption. And a lot of times we know, especially today. There are so many transmitted diseases and things like that that can really hurt you as a person. It can make you very sick. And a lot of times, especially the younger we are, we think we're invulnerable. We think that, ah, you know, that's not going to happen to me. But it is very, very possible. And that's why I advise, uh, and, and Solomon is telling his, hey, stay away from this. I don't know what Solomon, maybe Solomon had experience. Maybe he had some things. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't really tell us. And, but he's obviously telling his kids, like, hey, stay away from this because it can affect your health. It can affect your mental health, but it's even your physical health. Because we know, and especially today, there are so many sicknesses out there. There's so many diseases. So not only worrying about if I make a mistake, if I do this, you know, I'm going to end up, you know, paying child support or being separated from my family and this and that. But now I can also be in the position of getting sick. Uh, a lot of times it could be, uh, you know, a, a, a big sickness. Sometimes it could be something, you know, uh, small. But we know that there is a lot of um, this going around. And we all know, right? We all kind of understand what I'm talking about, AIDS and things like that, you know. So one of the things that we need to to remember as Christians is to keep ourselves away from the temptation, keep ourselves away from uh, sexual immorality that leads eventually to adultery when we're married. Okay, it can cost mental health. So uh, in Proverbs 5, 12, everyone, everyone following, everyone good? Good. Everyone still awake? <laughs> okay. How how I hated instructions, and my heart despised correction. I have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ear to those who instructed me. You will not forget what your part what your parents, teachers, preachers, and true friends told you. As you recall the violent effects of divorce on your spouse and on your children, who will likely suffer the worst. You will regret your stupidity. So basically saying, and like I said, this will also go more to the younger generation. A lot of times, but it, we're also, we as adults and married couples, a lot of times we don't listen. It could be, like I said, our parents. It could be teachers. It could be our pastor. And they advise us to say, look, you know, maybe don't do this. Maybe Maybe don't see this person anymore. Or may, maybe you should work on this area of your life. And a lot of times we're like, yeah, yeah. But a lot of times we have the, the spirit of, of rebellion, even though we're not totally rebellion, but rebelling, but we tend to think that we know better. And one of the things I always hear is because every situation is different, I understand. But we always think that we're, our situation is different. Well, they don't understand what I'm going through. You know, the pastor might be telling me, oh, you know, I've seen this many times and, you know, but he doesn't know exactly my situation. It's totally different. And you know, there will be some little different things here and there. But at the end, it's all the same thing. It's all leading down the same path, you know. So a lot of times as I have grown older and I have seen 
a lot of things and experience things. We as Christians and younger, especially before we actually make these, you know, huge mistakes, we need to listen to the advice. Sometimes, sometimes your parents or, 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 or pastors take advice, read the word, pray. God will give you insight and, and, and reveal to you through the Holy Spirit, hey, don't do this. Maybe don't talk to this person. Obviously, before you're, you know, you're married, don't maybe separate yourself from this person, you know? And these are things that I think that are very, very, very important. Uh, in, in my situation, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I guess I could give a small little testimony of of me growing up like I remember when I was younger uh, I mean I wasn't believe it or not I wasn't perfect and I made mistakes I, you know, like, and I know a lot of times you're going to hear like uh, I hear older people I'm not saying that I'm older I'm, old, I'm not older but like older older people when they're like when I was younger you know I used to uh, talk to all these women and this and that and you know I used to be the 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 main guy in my my little town and stuff like that you know have you y'all you know, never heard your dad or grandpa or anyone say stuff like that okay well uh, you know I'm, I'm gonna kind of go in that route because maybe in my day I, I was a little more cavalier in my youth and and there was you know there was prospects and stuff like that coming around they're like what yeah believe it or not yeah and I remember from my experience that a lot of times this temptation and would lead you to make mistakes and this is something that that we do not want to put our our, our ourself in um i i thank the lord all the time uh that uh god blessed me with my wife christina and uh but i do think that sometimes uh it took a while for me to maybe grow up. I also think that maybe because of her prayers and because of her uh, way ability to, to pray and, and ask God, you know, maybe that's what helped me grow up quicker and mature. And and I I remember, I remember that. Remember, there was a lot of times where people, even before we got married, there were a lot of uh, friends and family that were telling her, you know, hey, don't get with him or don't get married with him or don't date him and stuff like that. And they were probably right. But thank you. Thanks to the Lord. I mean, she kept praying. And if I wouldn't have changed a lot of things in my life, probably that would have been the best choice for her. But God can deal any with anyone and can change anyone. And I do believe that God gave me the ability to, to grow and to, to understand and to mature. And one of the things that I remember that changed me and like I said, maybe it's due to prayers. Maybe it's due to, to, to kind of looking into the Word and the Holy Spirit dealing with me. But I remember making a pact with, with God, with Jesus. When I was uh, getting, you know, very serious to get married uh, and uh, be involved in a relationship, I, I remember telling myself, look, Father, I know that there's been things in the past that I've made mistakes, like we all made mistakes, but I want to tell you right now that in my life, I'm going to make a commitment to you, Father, a commitment to my wife, my future family, to my friends and family, and to my church, and to my ministry, that I am going to be a man of righteousness. I'm not going to make mistakes, and I'm not going to put myself in situations where I'm going to be tempted or anything like that. And I remember really almost making it like a challenge it's like, I'm not going to be that person. I'm not going to be those people that you hear sometimes that are, oh, you know, this person did this and this person did that, you know. And I just remember in my life that that's something that I wanted to, to, to make certain that I am not going to be that person. And then more so, after having a family and having kids and, and stuff, it's like it made it even more like, no way, no way can I let let my family down, my wife or my kids, much less, you know, my, my, my Lord and Savior. So obviously this is something personal that I made, but I think it's something that we can all do. You know, make it a challenge in your life, you know? Make it a challenge like when you're out and about, you're uh, at the store, you're out with your friends, or maybe you're in the gym or something like that, and make a challenge to yourself and say, look, I know that there's 
prospects over here and the, I probably shouldn't be doing this or saying this or talking like this, but I'm going to make a challenge to myself and to God that I am not going to be that person. I'm not going to be that person that disappoints. That that uh, And I'm going to make a pact with you, Lord, that I'm going to be a righteous person. And you do that. And I remember that that helped me so much. That helped me a lot. And when things did come, because temptations will come, we all know that, you know, whether it's for a man or for a woman, temptations are going to come. The world is corrupted. And, and today, even more so, it's not just with people. It's not just with people that you know and stuff. It's, it's I would imagine in, in Solomon's day, he was advising his sons to stay away from corruption. But even today, it's even worse because, like I said, it's not limited to the, just your surroundings. You just turn on the TV and you're presented with all sorts of stuff, all sorts of uh, sexual morality. All you know, I mean, we know you could. Sometimes I'll just get on my email and things pop up and stuff like that. It's like, oh man, you know, like, you know, women and things and all this stuff like that. And you have to always constantly protect yourself and say, you know, get rid of that. You know, move on to the, the next thing. It is everywhere. You know, TV, social media, you know, uh, internet, you know. All these things, people around you, corruption. And we as Christians have to really, really be very careful to keep ourselves away from corruption and temptation. And that, like I said, it's not just from where you go or who you're with, but also what you are watching, what you're looking at. Because all those little things will start eating at your at your soul, will start eating at your spirit. And you might be like, well, that's not so bad. Or maybe I can, can look at this a little bit. But all that does is lead you to the next step. It's like a, like a gateway, you know. Okay, then, then you go here. And then you might get a message from uh, someone that you're like an ex-girlfriend or a wife. Or, you know, maybe you... you those that are married especially and then you're like well i would dabble that how's it going or this and that those are things that are tempting but you as christians we as christians must say no that's not right that is not what god wants and that's when you as a person whether it's a man or woman have to say no i am uh i am god's child and i am going to do all i can to be a man of righteousness or a woman of righteousness, and I'm going to do all I can. Amen. How many are, are with me on this? All right. So like I was saying before, uh, it can cost you your, your wealth. It can cause your mental health, uh, physical health. It can also cost your, rep your reputation. As suggested by these words, I was on the verge of total ruin. In the, midst, in the midst of assembly and congregation, Proverbs 5.14. Um, people do not take lightly the sin of adultery. Your unfaithfulness can eat away at your reputation. So, obviously, like I was talking before, and we'll go back to that, I've heard many stories, and I'm sure you have probably even more than that, even I have, because I don't have social media and stuff like that. Uh, believe it or not, you know, I know... I know people that, that are like 60 or 70 years old and they have social media and, and I'm like, I don't even know how to use that. And that's just a decision that I made in my life that it's like, you know what, I don't need social media. And, and that's just me. I'm not saying that social media is bad or anything, but that's just one thing that I said, well, I have LinkedIn. I always, I always go back to that. I do have LinkedIn, so, but I never get on it. But, uh, but that's, just a, that's just a decision that I made is like, I don't, I don't need that really for me. I don't need people reaching out to me that uh, that I don't ever see and stuff like that. You know, the, the people that I talk to and, uh, and have fellowship with are my family and friends and people that I see here at church, you know, and that's just how it is. Uh, but uh, it can cost your reputation. Like I said, y'all might know this more than me because y'all see this constantly. Y'all see in the Christian, and I'm talking about the Christian church, Y'all see constantly people that lose uh, a lot because of sin, because of sexual morality, because of adultery, because of fornication, because of these sins. And a lot of times they could be big pastors or, or music artists or, or 
uh, uh, you know, men and women of, of, of stature. And because of this one mistake, sometimes that they could make, that it becomes that comes out and comes to light, they lose everything sometimes. Not just, obviously, maybe their wife or their husband, and maybe their children, maybe their wealth, maybe their their health, and and uh, but then it comes to the uh, reputation of, of maybe their church and maybe their family and friends, their ministry, you know, and this can have a devastating effect on a person. You know, and a lot of times, if we're not careful, it takes a lot to get out of that. If not, uh, sometimes people can't. Sometimes, sometimes this really destroys them, and uh, it, they can't get out of it. That's why I suggest, and I've seen it so much. Always remember that that uh, it, you're going to be in the. Sometimes people will be in these situations, but as long as you know that you were doing right, that you were following God's command, that you were following. Uh, a, a straight path of righteousness whether harm is de- being done to you you must understand that God will lead you out and God will give you the light so young people I advise be careful you know uh, try to, to to keep yourself away from temptation amen All right, okay so um, the prevention of adultery Basically, love your your spouse. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Ephesians 5, 20, uh, 25-28. Husbands, love your wives. Seek the highest good for her and surround her with a caring, unselfish love, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her. So, obviously, go both ways. Wives, uh, love your husband, and a husband, love your wife. Amen. Right, babe? Do I, I do good? Okay. <laughs> uh, one of the true character uh, characters is revealed by their immoral immorality. If they commit adultery. So this is one thing that I was reading. A lot of times if they commit adultery with you, they're, they are likely to commit adultery against you. And this is, again, to more of the younger generation that I advise. Be careful um, who you date, who you talk to. Um, it's, uh, I know that sometimes it's, uh, important or sometimes it's, how can I say, sometimes it's not as easy to give advice because I've already went through a lot, but I know you guys like, well, this is the person for me, you know? But if you start seeing little signs of, if, if they are trying to get you to do something and and you actually say, hey, you know what? I'm not going to do that, you know, uh, or I'm not going to do this with you or whatever. And they, for any reason, are like, well, you know, they get angry or they don't want to talk to you anymore. Then then you, it's probably there's not a true love there. See, a lot of times I think we as Christians mistake love for the Hollywood version of love where, you know, we fall in love and you have that feeling and and that's important i'm not saying that's not true but you know you have that feeling and you're in love and you want to see that person when when you're dating and stuff like that but see love is way more just beyond that love is responsibility love is respect and love is sacrifice imagine if god loved us the way sometimes we have love with other people the first time we get in a fight or anything like that, it's like you don't—they don't even talk to each other anymore and this and that. Well, thank goodness that God is not like that with us because He has what is true love. True love is responsibility, respect, sacrifice, you know. And those are the things that you need to look for in in a person, in a partner, you know, is somebody that is going to give you respect, somebody that is going to be uh, responsible, someone that's going to love you for who you are. And, and is going to sacrifice. And what do I mean by sacrifices? Sometimes you're going to have to sacrifice. You know, hey, we shouldn't go over there. We shouldn't do this. Don't put yourself in that situation. Maybe I can't be alone with the, with my boyfriend or with my girlfriend in, yeah, I don't know, in, in their car or in their, in their house or whatever like that. You have to judge yourself and, and, and say, this is important to me. Because a lot of times, 
if we're not careful, we will make mistakes. And if we're not, I don't want to say fortunate, we can pay ultimate consequences to those mistakes. Like I said about a lot of my friends earlier, they're paying the price ultimately today, you know, and some of us can get away with it. Maybe some of us can't. We don't know. You know, life is so, if you want to say unfair, but remember, at the end of the day, the devil, especially to the Christian community and to Christian young people, the devil is always trying to attack you. Is always out there trying to devour you like a roaring lion, trying to look and destroy you. Destroy you, which will destroy your family, will destroy your future, will destroy your ministry and your church. All these things will start collapsing like a house of cards. And and what I would advise is not to put yourself in that situation. You know, be righteous. Take that challenge and say, I am going to be a, a righteous person. I'm going to be a righteous man. I'm going to be a righteous uh, woman. And I'm going to respect the person that I'm with. And I'm going to be responsible. And I'm going to sacrifice. Amen. Everybody, everyone good. Praise God. Give a hand clap to the Lord. Amen. Um, so I had uh, some other verses. But basically, in conclusion, the price of adultery is terrible. We know that. And we see this constantly. And there is so much that we could go over in this topic alone. I mean, this could be, you know, part, you know, a whole series of just uh, this this uh, sin, just, just in this topic alone. But to make it short and just to understand for us, we need to guard ourselves. Just as Solomon is, is trying to advise his sons, we should take that advice also. To, to, to be careful, to keep ourselves away from temptation, to keep ourselves away from the immoral man or the immoral woman. And those of us that are married and that are in, in that situation where we're starting to feel the temptation from somebody else, don't. Try to stop yourself. Try to, to always remen- remember that God is watching and that God is, 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 is able to, to get you out of that situation if we pray. And we ask God for um, for His uh, Holy Spirit to guide us. Like I always say, and I always say every week, the best thing to do is to pray, to to read His Word, to to uh, have a better relationship with God. And the more that we practice this, the more the Holy Spirit will give us that discernment uh, uh, to to be able to make better choices and not make mistakes. Uh, so we know that the price of adultery is terrible which too many learn by sad experience, which all can avoid by the heeding God by heeding God's word. The prevention of adultery is possible when our love is in the right place. Loving the Lord with all our heart, loving our spouse with God's blessing. Do not destroy the lives of so many with misdirected misdirected affection amen i will conclude here today let us let us pray let us uh, bow our heads let's bow our heads and let us ask lord dear father king of the universe we thank you father god for this wonderful day we ask father jesus to give us the ability to make the right decisions in life we know that there is going to be constant constant uh trials and 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 obstacles in our life and we know there's going to be people sometimes or there's going to be situations that are going to present themselves to us and we're going to have a decision to make that are we going to to take the path of the flesh are we going to take the the immoral path or are we going to take the challenge and make a pact with our father to to be able to make the right decision and to minimize the mistakes in our lives that we know that can ultimately cause us consequences for the rest of our lives. We ask, Father Jesus, that you give us the ability, the wisdom, the strength, the knowledge to be able to to face on these challenges head on, that that you will give us the victory that we can have to have a a stable family, to have a good marriage, to have a good relationship, and, and to always remember that you are in 
in, in the middle of that relationship, that you are at center of that relationship, of that marriage, of the family, of our church. Because we know, Father God, that if we believe in you, that if we obey your commandments and we walk in your path, that you will deliver us, that you will bless us in so many ways that we can't, that we can't even possibly imagine. We know that you are real, so real. And we know that the corruption and sin is very real. But if we rely on you and we put our faith in you, we know that you will deliver us and that you will give us guidance. Give us that discernment. Give us the, the, the Holy Spirit to make the right choices. Father, we love you so much. We give you all the praise and all the glory. And we thank you for the word that you have given us today. In Jesus' name, we love you. We worship you. And we give you praise. And in Jesus' name, we say Amen. Praise God, everybody.